many of that is we are a SEBI registered RA house. Uh, we are invested in the idea that we are presenting today and our views are positive and biased. So please do your due diligence thoroughly. Will you invest if I tell you the stock got listed in November 24 and it is still up 150% from the time uh, it got listed? Plus the 12 months trading fee is 60 times. But it is at a massive in the inflection point. The order book is 8x of FI24 revenues. Uh, the earnings carry off for next three years is going to be more than 50%, and it is available at 11 times FI26. The ROC is, ROEs are expected to be more than 30%. I'll rather stick here. Last year, this time in this conference, we presented an idea which is insulation solar which was module manufacturing in the solar sector. Today I am here to cover the power transmission and distribution space. Before we go to the stock, let us just understand the, what's happening in the sector. This, this chart remains the key of today's presentation. You know, uh, when we talk about power, we always talk about peak demand and peak supply. The current, if you look at the FI25 numbers, the current peak power demand and supply is at 250 gigawatts. Okay, and as per the, uh, the Central Electricity Authority, this is expected to go at 5 to 6 percent to reach 335 gigawatt by 2030. However, our estimates say that the peak demand is always increased at a much higher pace at around 7 percent. Uh, so our estimates are that the peak demand in 2030-31 will be 360-370 gigawatts. Okay. Uh, to cater to that kind of peak demand, the NEP, the National Electric Plan, uh, plans to increase the install capacity from 450 gigawatts to 900 gigawatts. And maximum of the addition is coming from 60% from solar and 17% from wind. When we say that peak demand is going to increase at 7%, there are two major reasons we will add to the demand, which is data centers and EVs. EVs are still to pick up in India. And uh, as per the estimates, 12 to 15% of demand in power will come from these two particular sectors. If you look at the chart on the right, okay, our energy consumption, which is for 450 crore units a day will rise to 650 crores as per our estimates and that is why a lot of focus on this sector by the government is mandatory. This is another important chart. If you look at traditionally the HVDC network was well, concentrated on the eastern belt because of the conventional energy resources. Okay, and most of the addition, as I just said, 60% is coming from solar, is happening on the western belt of it. So a lot of greater than 220 kV lines needs to be added on the western belt. And the company that we're going to cover today is strategically in a sweet spot to do this. When you just saw that a lot of installed capacity on the western side, there is a untapped demand for the distribution and uh, transmission lines that we put up. What are those in terms of numbers? Uh, if you look at this, uh, transmission lines need to be added to the tune of 30,000 circuit kilometers over the next 5-6 years to address the demand. Whereas we have only added 14,000-15,000 kilometers in the last 3 years. Same is the case for transformers. Tran transformation capacity needs to be added much higher than what is getting done. The requirement is of 212 GVA versus 70 to 80 happening today. These are in terms of volumes. What does it mean in terms of value? Okay. Uh, as for the NEP, which is the National Electric Plan, there's a 9.2 lakh crore capex plan from the period of 22 to 32. Four and a half lakhs to be spent in the current five years and five lakhs in the coming five years. If you look at this chart below, okay, and what has been done, what has been added so far, 
in terms of transmission, in terms of transformation capacity and what remains. You will see that around 70% of the capex still remains to be done over the next 5 to 7 years and which is why there is an untapped potential in the transmission and distribution space uh, and which we are very bullish on. Although it is very difficult to you know, quantify the numbers, but as per the estimates, around 40% of this line lacquer ore is, is set up for transmission and 60% for the substation development. We today are largely focused on the EPC part of it, which constitutes 20-25% of this budget to be at 2.3 lakh crore. Okay. There are a lot of large players like AEC, APAR, CG Power, which will focus on extra high voltage lines. But the, the, the segment, which is less than 440k kilowatt, there are a lot of smaller players like KC, Viviana, PIGCL, and today we're going to focus on Rajesh Power. So the company I'm covering is Rajesh Power. So Rajesh Power largely is a uh, power service provider for the renewable and non-renewable space. In the non-renewable space, offer services including implementing turnkey projects for excelling high extra voltage cables, transmission lines, setting up of extra high voltage substations, design and implementation of underground power distribution system. In the renewable space, uh, Rajesh Power works on uh, turnkey basis for build, operate and maintain solar plants. It also operate, it also offers uh, maintaining and operations of the substations. Let us look at the revenues and the mix of these numbers. Okay. Uh, typical, typical installation of EHV cable transmission lines, construction of EHV substation, uh, installation of power transformer, implementation of solar power plant. This is how, this is all the work that Rajesh Power does. Let us spend some time on this slide, okay. Uh, the revenue mix, so there are three cuts that we are presenting today. Is one is the uh, government to private business, uh, the business in transmission and distribution, and the state-wise. If you look at it, Rajesh Power is fairly spread uh, between government to uh, private business, uh, distributed well in transmission and distribution business, and this is the unique part. 90% of the revenues for Rajesh comes from the Western Belt, which is Gujarat and Rajasthan. Uh, you look at the government, uh, you look at the clients, uh, it works with the marquee government entities, GetCo, RRVP, and uh, RVN, which are very good paymaster. On the private side, uh, it has a few very good marquee names, the Adani Torrent, which are large players on the private side. So, this is the revenue. Uh, matrix for Rajesh so far. This is all what we know. What's there for future is what we will focus now on. Okay. Uh, before I talk about the order book and um, uh, order book and how the numbers look like, this is one one uh, strategic investment that Rajesh has done, which is in HKRP Innovations. HKRP Innovation is a uh, energy solution provided for IoT platforms across energy and power sector. Uh, they, they, fo they focus on doing IoT and cloud based solutions to power grids and renewable energy spaces. This is the kind of intelligent feeder management looks like, you know. This, there is a live tracking, they try to reduce energy costs, increase uh, efficiency, and focus on downturn reduction. All of this is going to be very, very critical uh, going forward as we go, as we add more solar, wind uh, to the power generation capacity. Uh, smart solutions, uh, cloud solutions, mobile solutions are very, very critical and uh, Rajesh has bought a 26% stake in this company which is catering to most part of this. So order book, I just when I started, I, talk, I spoke about the order book. At 524 revenues were 285 crore. And it has an order book which is more than 2700 crore executable over 18 to 24 months. Uh, yeah, it's 
with pipeline of more than 5,000 crores. So the opportunity that Rajesh Sikh saw, especially being in the sweet spot, is huge. Um, if you look at the numbers, look at the FI24, uh, 285 crores, and look at the jump that we are seeing over 25 and 26. Our estimates are that this year it will close around more than 800 crores of top line and a pack of around 75 crores. And now look at the FI26 numbers with a 1500 crore estimated revenue and 130 crore or uh, more than 125 crore pack margins. Rajesh looks very, very interesting opportunity going forward. These are, these are a few uh, uh, comparable players, but uh, if you look at the numbers, Rajesh is far larger on, on, on the revenue front, on order book front, and even on the multiple front, it's available to really, really cheap. So, see there, the, the kind of markets we sit in today, okay, uh, there are a lot of risks that we perceive to be there. One is delay in the project execution, slow apex or slow government and private apex, and delay in payment by the youth. However, we believe in the time of adversity, you get the best investment opportunities. And that is it. We are to present that is for